In this video, we'll learn about the definite integral and how it's used to find the area under a curve. So the area under a curve y equals f of x from a to b is represented by this collection of symbols called the definite integral. The fundamental theorem of calculus says that the definite integral can be evaluated by finding an antiderivative of the function, plugging in b, plugging in a, and subtracting. So let's do a quick example. Let's evaluate the integral from 1 to 3 of x squared plus 2x with respect to x. Using the fundamental theorem of calculus, the first thing we need to do is find an antiderivative of x squared plus 2x. An antiderivative of x squared is 1 third x cubed, and an antiderivative of 2x is x squared. Now normally when we take antiderivatives, we add plus c at the end. But one nice thing about the fundamental theorem of calculus is that it tells us that we can use whichever antiderivative we like. So we're going to make our lives easier and choose the antiderivative where the c is equal to 0. So we just have 1 third x cubed plus x squared, which is an antiderivative of x squared plus 2x. Notice also we have these brackets here with the 1 and the 3. That's a little reminder to ourselves that the next step is going to be to plug in 3, plug in 1, and then subtract. So let's go ahead and do that. We've got our antiderivative here. We've plugged in 3. We've plugged in 1. And now we're subtracting. So when we plug in 3, we get 18. When we plug in 1, we get 4 thirds. And 18 minus 4 thirds works out to be 50 over 3. When we're computing a definite integral, the answer should always be a number, not a function. So make sure that you're distinguishing in your mind the indefinite integral, which is an integral sign without any numbers attached to it, and that just means to find the antiderivative, versus the definite integral, which is going to be the integral sign with two numbers on it, and that means that we're looking for an area, and the answer should be just a number. Now we need to be a little bit more precise here. In fact, the definite integral actually computes signed area, so that if the function dips below the x-axis, we're going to actually get a negative amount of area computed. So in this example, we're computing the integral from 0 to 2 of x squared minus 1. And notice that the function is under the x-axis. This is going to give us negative area here. This pink area here is going to count negatively. And this gray area here above the x-axis is going to count positively. The nice thing, though, is that the definite integral just does this automatically. We don't have to break this up into separate pieces and count the negative part negative and the positive part positive. This is just going to happen automatically using our fundamental theorem of calculus. So let's follow the steps again. Using the fundamental theorem of calculus, we first find an antiderivative. We put our little square brackets with the two numbers to remind ourselves that we need to plug in and subtract. We plug in 2, we plug in 0, and when we do all that, we get 2 thirds. Now let's think for a second what this is telling us. This is telling us that the positive area minus the negative area works out to be 2 thirds. Another way to think about that is that there's a little bit more gray area than there is pink area. Specifically, there's two-thirds of a square unit more gray area than pink area. This gives us net area, or signed area. Another way to think about what the definite integral tells us is that it's giving us an amount of accumulated change. So if we know the rate at which a quantity is changing, the integral is going to add up all of those changes and give us a total. Uh, one way to apply this is if we had a marginal cost function that tells us the rate at which the cost changes. So we could integrate our marginal cost function, and that's going to give us an amount of total or accumulated cost. Let's illustrate this using an example. So in this problem, we've got a company that installs kitchen countertop, and has marginal cost based on the number of feet that are installed. So what we're asked for is to find the cost of installing an extra 14 feet after 50 feet have already been ordered. So we don't care about the cost of the first 50 feet. We simply want to know how much additional cost will accrue from installing 14 more feet. So what we want then is the difference between the cost of, of installing 64 feet minus the cost of installing 50 feet. That's going to give us how much more it would cost to install these extra 14 feet. The 64 is coming from 50 plus the extra 14 that we want. So cost of 64 minus cost of 50 we're using the fundamental theorem a little bit backwards here, but that's the integral from 50 to 64 of our marginal cost function. We find our antiderivative, we plug in our two numbers, 64 and 50, and when we do that, using our calculator, we get approximately $291.35.